How does one stay peaceful during stressful times? I am Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. Thank you to every new subscriber. Please be so kind as to hit the like button if you like what I am saying. Get on board, all aboard. The dreams are a reality express. I am working towards my community tab. I'm so excited about that tab. I just want to put good information out there. I have a NACA video coming up. I was working on my NACA file last night. And oh my God, <laughs> it's a lot of work. I see why people give up on that thing. It takes some time, but best thing to do is break it up into different sessions. You'll get it done. How does one stay peaceful when all hell is breaking loose? Woo! Well, sometimes I think about my life and I feel like I have an unfair advantage because I do live alone. Um, you know, I don't have kids right now. Romantically, I'm in a holding pattern. That's kind of where I'll say I'm at. But I'm starting to like it. And if I could be transparent, as I always am with my lovely sus subscribers, I have a bit of a fear of getting remarried. And I'll tell you all why. I got my divorce in September, <laughs> 1999, and I am so used to running my show that when I do get married, I know it's going to be so different to have to adjust to another person. Other people speak about this who've been single, who was single for a while, then they got married. It's quite the adjustment, but I don't think it's going to be as bad. As I'm, as I'm thinking, it's just a long time to be in your own space. During these 22, three years, however many years it's been, I went from one extreme to another. As that 30-year-old woman, 34-year-old woman, the clinging vine I was at times in certain relationships, Expecting the poor guy to be my all, what a mistake. It's not fair to them, and I'm surely doing a disservice to myself. So I went on this search for peace. How can I be happy? How can I get rid of this depression? How can I get rid of anxiety? I have codependency. My dad was an alcoholic, therefore I'm drawn to these Certain type of men, no, not necessarily an alcoholic man, but a man with a lot of issues. The one in the room with the most issues, probably the one I'm going to run up to or he'll run up to me. Like a mop to a flame. How do I get out of this crazy cycle? I would find boyfriends quickly. I didn't have no trouble getting a boyfriend. Least of my problems. But the relationship wouldn't last or I would end up dumping them quickly. It's all, it was always some drama. Was, let me see. I can name some of one guy. Me and him both were getting a divorce at the same time. He had his drama. I had mine. That didn't work. Another one still had feelings for his ex. He wasn't fully invested. Sweet guy. Sweet enough. But mm -mm. Another one had trouble working, and I t totally told him, go concentrate on yourself. Don't worry about me in the relationship. And the beat goes on. But it wasn't only them. I played a part in those relationships, too. Maybe expecting them to be too much too soon. Maybe expecting them to provide me with happiness. So once I went on the quest to be happy on my own, that's when the happiness came. Lord behold, within a year, I'm sick. But I'm grateful 
because I had found some source of contentment. How did I find this contentment? A lot of reading. I did a lot of reading. I would go to the library and I would go to Borders Books in Oak Park on Harlem and Lake and sit in there for two, three hours reading, reading, and reading those books. My dear longtime friend told me that her mom read The Power of Positive Thinking. Shout out to Tanya and Miss Rosemary. And I got that book. And I still read it to this day. Now, that was in 07, 06, 07, when I started reading that book. To this day, I still read it. I was just reading it a few days ago. I just read a few pages out of it. The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent P.E.A.L.E. Peel. The book is set in the 1950s, so you will hear some terms like Negro and maybe even colored, so don't be offended because that was how they spoke back then, most unfortunately, well. Um, but the message is powerful and life-changing. So that book turned it around for me, Prayers That Avail Much by Dr. Jermaine Copeland turned it around for me, and I just rebought that book because the one I had, pages were falling apart. But the book is full of maybe over a hundred plus prayers. You do those prayers, do the Bible verse behind it, watch the magic happen. How does one find peace during stressful times? Everybody had their own thing. I can only tell you what worked for me. Um, I was fortunate to be at a church for almost 20 years. I had a good foundation with the church that helped me. The books I just named helped me prayer. And I've been journaling since 1998. Now, I used to journal about bad stuff. And then I flipped it and started journaling about positive things or the things I would like to have or the things I already have and expressing gratitude when I switched it around from the negative oh I hate that this relationship isn't working I knew this was going to happen why write about that stuff that's what I used to do and if you do want to write about negative stuff maybe write about it and burn it or flush it down the toilet but I wouldn't write about bad stuff and just hold on to it but for some, that may be a form of therapy. Maybe that'll help you. That doesn't help me. I do better writing about my dreams, my goals, what I'm grateful for, and what I desire. And that is magic for me. So let's go with tip number one. Tip number one, how to deal, how to be peaceful during stressful times. Tip number one, you definitely want to get in tune with yourself. Practice some self-love, self-care, and it may be meaning to be alone. Meditation, journaling, attend a church service, read your Bible, positive books, even positive movies. These things help you become calmer. Everybody can be happy when everything's going good. The kids are healthy. Your family's good, your health is good, your money's rolling in, you're traveling, you're in Hawaii, Vegas, wherever you want to go. You and your guy, you and your lady clicking, everything's good. Yeah, easy to be happy. What do you do when they call you with that bad news, a bad diagnosis? Somebody you love is very sick. You get the pink slip from the job. You get a a bill saying, you know, oh, your roof needs fixing $5,000. What do you do? How do you keep your peace when the bad news rolls in? Tip number two, with certain situations, write down your solution. Don't focus on the problem. Get you an A, plan A, B, C, D. I have a therapist, I told you all. I hit the jackpot. There's some beautiful um, therapists out here. I hope people consider me one of them. <laughs> but there's some therapists out here that they go in the trenches for 
their clients. And that's how I try to move. I really do. I love my clients so much. I appreciate them for picking me. They could pick anybody else, but they pick this here girl from the west side of Chicago. So I try to go hard for them. But um, I've been talking to my therapist, you know, of course, about my most deep and innermost thoughts. But we are like one reason why she was happy to have me as a client, because I'm a clinician, too. And she told me, hey, we got to stick together as clinicians. We have to support each other. She said it would be an honor to be your therapist because I know the work that you do. I do it too. And she's been guiding me on how to start my own practice. And so she was like, what's, you know, I told her I have a fear of starting this practice because with my job or with the other job I had, the beauty of working for someone is I know every other week that money hit my account. If I have my own practice, I feel like that's uncertain. Clients cancel, clients move on, and there goes your money. But we are in a place right now where clients are abundantly coming in. The practice I work for, thank God, we stay with a waiting list. So we very blessed. I think a lot of practices are right now. It's, it's a time of mental health focus. And people are becoming more aware. But anyway, my therapist was like, what will you do if the money is not what you need? What would you, what is your backup plan? I said, oh, well, I have 12 plus years of purchasing. I could pull in 70, 80,000 doing that. Even if it's for a short amount of time as a contract. She said, there you go. I told her, I know HR. There you go. I still am a social worker. I could do that until the business picks up. She said, well, there you go. So again, focus part uh, tip two is focus on your solution if you can. Now, I know if you get a bad diagnosis or something like that happens to your loved one, that's a tough one. And I can only tell you how I had to move when I was sick. I didn't take it well the first time tell you that much but after three weeks and after I digested it I just thought about healing do what the doctor tell you Tammy cut out any negativity and I became (laughs) ruthless if you was bringing drama to me you're not getting on my phone no more if you brought drama to me in person hang it up you're not coming back in my house because I was like I got healed from cancer I don't have time for the drama And you have to protect yourself. That's tip number three. Protect your peace at all costs. I don't care who it is. I don't care what family member. Protect your peace at all costs. That means cut out the drama. Watch how much news you take. I don't don't watch the news. I listen to it when I'm in my truck. Sometimes I turn to a.m., I read it online at times. Sometimes I get it accidentally. I'm not watching a bunch of news. There's no way I can go throughout my day servicing elderly people, people with disabilities. And I don't, I'm not saying I feel sad when I see them, but I do feel reflective when I see someone with disabilities. I feel reflective when I see an elderly person, 81, and their daughter's taking care of them. Because that's me. In the future. So, and then my clients, they come to me sometimes with grief. So, there's no way I could watch a bunch of bad news and do all the work that I do. I just don't have the capacity for it. So, protect your peace at all costs. Tip number four. Last but not least, the last tip. Do something fun and lighthearted. Whatever it is you can do, whatever it is, a walk in the park. I remember, I think this might have been last year. I was like, I feel kind of blah. So I'm going to go get me some ice cream. I went up to Culver's and got me a nice ice cream. I felt better. Whatever it takes. Watch a cute movie. I watched a romantic movie yesterday. That's always nice. Call a friend. Phone a friend. Get out the house. 
Get around some kids. They'll have you laughing. Boy, anytime I feel any type of way, I see them little boys, my little great nephews, it's over. They funny. Them kids fun T. Fun T with a T. <laughs> Do something fun. I hope these tips helped you all. I am Tammy C. Walker. C for Sharice. And have a beautiful Sunday. God bless you all. Love you all so much. Bye-bye.